Okay. I'll just um, put the verse five on the screen. Yes, Sajji, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with the Mangalacharit. Yes. Om Jnana Devrandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavasha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Advaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padana Sahigana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitansha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Dapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Shari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kalpa tarvesha, kripa sindhubhya evacha, patita nama pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha, jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda, shri advaita gadadhara, shri vasadi gauravakta vrinda, hare krishna, hare krishna, krishna krishna, hare hare, hare rama, hare rama, rama rama, hare hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada, Hare Krishna, everyone. I'll start with the verse recitation. Text 5, it is Krishna Tiyasya Giritam Manasadriyeta Diksha Sticheta Pranata Bhishya Bhajanta Misham Shushru Shaya Bhajana Vignam Ananya Manya Ninda Dishunya Ridame Ipsita Sangha Labdhyana The translation goes, one should mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name of Lord Krishna one should offer humble obeisances to the devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation, that is Diksha, and is engaged in worshipping the deity. And one should associate with and faithfully serve that pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service and whose heart is completely devoid of the propensity to criticize others. So first I'll start with the summary table which Hemang Prabhu has shown us many times of NOI, which uh, uh, the verses 1 to 7 covers Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Uh, then verse 8 is Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti and verse 9 to 11 is Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. So uh, out of these 11 verses, uh, the first subsection is for, uh, verse uh, 1 to 3, which is Shraddha, uh, which is controlling the senses. The second subsection is verses 4, 5, and 6 are related to Sadhu Sangha. So we are currently doing the second subsection, which is between uh, 4 and 6 verses. And today's verse is verse 5. Now, today's verse 5 is about association with the devotees according to the levels of advancement. And the specifications of such devotees are given here. Now, earlier verse 4, we talked about the six loving exchanges, that is Preeti Lakshanam, but it was given in general with all the devotees. So this verse explains that there are three levels of devotees, which is uh, Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, and Uttam Adhikari. So the first level, which is the Kanishta Adhikari, the characteristics are given are, uh, it says, in the verse, the phrase is Krishna Iti Yasyagiri, which means one who is chanting the holy name of Krishna. So how do we relate to such a devotee? Uh, the response is should be Manasa Driyeta. So one should mentally honor such a devotee. Then the second level is Madhya Madhikari and the characteristics given are such a devotee has undergone Diksha, which is a, a Brahman Diksha and is engaged in Bhajantam Isham, which is he is worshipping the deity. 
to such a devotee our response should be we should offer humble obeisances to such a devotee the, the third level is uttam adhikari and the characteristics given are he is bhajana vignam he is advanced in undeviated devotional service and his heart is completely clean and devoid of propensity to criticize others so the phrase here in the verse given is anya ninda nindadi shunya so such a devotee has zero inclination to criticize others and one point to note here is the uttam adhikari is uncritical even when he is criticized and he is shanta he is unagitated in his heart so how do we relate to such a devotee it is given that we should do shushrushaya so we should faithfully serve such a uttam adhikari and we should do we should desire to associate with such devotees and the phrase given for that is ipsita sangalabdhya now the reason such details of the various levels are given is not to label other people but it is to introspect within and to see where we are at what level we are so we can progress now further description of the three levels were also discussed the first level which is a kanishth adhikari the details given are he worships only the de uh, deity in the temple nowhere else because he thinks krishna is only present in the temple the second uh, quality he has is he does not know how to behave with other people in general and to the devotees the third is he is harina initiated and he is trying to chant now the word used here is giri which means he is chanting with the tongue because he is a beginning devotee is not coming from his heart the next characteristic is this devotee's faith is soft such a person if he prematurely considers himself to be a guru then sometimes he can fall down now we go to the second level of devotee which is madhyam adhikari such a devotee has received brahman initiation he is not strong in his shastric knowledge but has strong faith and practices undeviated bhakti he is undeterred and continues to practice bhakti under any circumstances at all times with determination he also has four qualities such as prema maitri kripa upeksha now he does prema he worships the supreme lord as the highest object of love which is prema the maitri he does cultivates friendships with devotees so that is maitri with the with his peers that is then the next is kripa he is merciful to kanishta bhaktas so he bestows he gives kripa to the kanishta bhaktas and the fourth is upeksha he avoids those who are envious by nature he he does that because interactions with such devotees sometimes can drive away such people the envious people away from krishna so he does not interact with them he just maintains a distance and avoids them also it may be that he may imbibe the qualities that a envious person has and uh, he uh, so in order to protect himself he uh, also avoids the uh, envious people then we go to the third level which is who is the topmost devotee he is the uttam adhikari now this devotee is a mahabhagavat he does not blaspheme others and is engaged in the unalloyed devo devotion of the lord he is self realized he is offenseless he is free from anarthas he is disinterested in the material enjoyment he expounds and spreads krishna consciousness such a devotee he can give association to anyone to all people and bring them closer to krishna he, he doesn't get affected Uh, by associating with all different type of people when he is preaching he comes to the madhyama level he doesn't fall down to the madhyama level but this for the sake of preaching purpose he does that now the next is uh, we all know about the nine stages of bhakti starting from adav shraddha sadhu sangha bhajan kriya and so on until the prema so let us look at wh where all these three levels of devotees fit in now as per the table the first three stages that is shraddha sadhu sangha and bhajan kriya is done by the kanishta adhikari now having said that actually all three 
are practiced by all levels of devotee. They do all these three, level, uh, three stages. The next four stages, that is Anartha Nivriti, Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti, is practiced by the Madhima. But Kanishtha also does Anartha Nivriti. So in one sense, we can see there is no demarcation as such in one sense. But the difference is the uh, Madhyam Adhikari does it much more seriously than a Kanishtha Adhikari. So it is basically the seriousness of the practice that varies. And the, then the last two stages, that is Bhava and Preva, is where the Uttam Adhikari is situated. Now we go to the next uh, part, which is about there's another way of understanding the three different categories of devotees. This was given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we have heard about this famous pastime of the Kulin Gram Vasis who used to visit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Puri uh, for the four months of Chaturmas. And at the end of Chaturmas, they would ask a question about the instructions from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to give three instructions. So the three instructions were Krishna, Se Krishna Nam, Krishna Seva, and Vaishnava Seva. And this particular instruction was given in three consecutive years. So actually the same uh, instructions were given, but Kulit Ramvasis, they used to wonder who is really a Vaishnava. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave three, uh, three different answers based on uh, who three different levels of Vaishnava are. So he first year he said the Vaishnava are those who chant the holy name of Krishna even once. The second year he said, Vaishnav Tara, he called them Vaishnav Tara. He said that the devotee who chants the holy name of Krishna constantly and serves the Lord constantly is a Vaishnav Tara. And the third level and the third year he said, Vaishnav Tama, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that in whose presence one feels like chanting the holy name of the Lord, uh, such a devotee is a Vaishnav Tama. So as in English we say good, better, best. So in that way, he defined these three terms, Vaishnav, Vaishnav Tara, and Vaishnav Tama. Now, so basically this uh, uh, categorization was based on the chanting of the holy name. Now, the second categorization was given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu based on faith. So he said that the, uh, the devotee whose faith is strong is a Kanishta Adhikari. The uh, devotee whose faith is stronger uh, so sorry, the first is one whose faith is weak, soft, is a Kanishta Adhikari. The second is one whose faith is strong, is a Madhyam Adhikari. And the third is uh, one whose faith is very strong, he is a Uttam Adhikari. Then there was another way of categorizing which was given in Srimad Bhagavatam and that was based on Rati. And this was in 11th Canto where Nimi Maharaj asked questions to Navayogindras. And Rati means Prema for Krishna. So this was the third way of categorizing the three levels. Now, again, we come to the same question. Why these various ways of understanding is given to us? So as I mentioned earlier, this is not to label anyone, but for us to understand, for us to introspect and understand at what level we are and then progress from there. And also this Understanding about the three levels also help us understand who is the Uttam Adhikari. Because if we know who the, who the Uttam Adhikari is, then we can uh, uh, seek such a uh, Uttam Adhikari, uh, seek, uh, seek diksha, diksha from such a devotee and progress in our devotional path. Uh, one more uh, one more point to note about the Madhyam and Uttam Adhikari, which Hemang Prabhu mentioned about was... At the Madhyama level, one can push oneself. One can push oneself to come to that level. But for the Uttama Adhikari, for that, we need Kripa. We need Kripa from the devotees. We need Kripa from the Supreme Lord. So one cannot do it by one's own endeavors, but one needs Kripa to come to the level of Uttama Adhikari. Now, I think I have uh, finished probably about 15 minutes. I was not watching the clock. But there's just one small point. Uh, I hope it doesn't take too long. Uh, uh, Hemang Prabhu also mentioned about Shraddha. What is strong Shraddha? So in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela 22.62, uh, it is given that one who has taken complete shelter of the Supreme Lord, one who has 
completely surrendered to the Lord Shri Krishna, such a person's faith is unshakable, is very strong. And for such a person, he does not have to do anything separately in the way of six debts. I mean, we know about the six debts, which is debts to the demigods, to the sages, to the forefathers, to the living entities, to the family, relatives. So, uh, but one has to take this, very, it cannot take it casually, one has to take it seriously, because one, if one has not taken full shelter, one has taken partial shelter, then the debts still apply. So we have to be careful about that. So, yeah, this is what I have to share. And uh, I hope I have covered, tried to cover many points. I don't know if I missed out any important points. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Padaji. Very nicely explained. I think you covered practically everything. What I discussed like in two classes, you covered in 12 minutes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mata. Very nice. If anyone has any question, you can ask to Mataji. She is fully ready, prepared from verse 5. Okay. Everyone is happy. Mataji, so your seva is very good. I have a small question, Prabhu. Sorry, I cannot switch on the camera due okay. to some. But, I was always um, saved by the devotees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, Madhari, Mataji. I have a small question. Just, um, I would like... Uh, little bit again um, repeating or uh, detail about um, five debts and uh, how we can uh, come over that Mataji you said in the end right yeah yeah so if one has completely surrendered to the supreme lord full full surrender hmm. uh, not partial surrender then hmm. because we have already surrendered to the lord then all these six debts are taken care of one doesn't have okay. to separately endeavor to fulfill these debts. Okay. That is what is said in the Shastras. Yeah, so that debts is like to our forefathers, to our parents, etc. Yeah, so in that the... sense, we, we don't need to perform our prescribed duties for, uh, towards them? or No, we, we do have to. But the our main focus should be uh, worship of the Supreme Lord, surrender to the Supreme Lord. But it doesn't mean that we give up the other things. Like, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the debts to the forefathers. So if yeah. we do the uh, worship and uh, surrender to the Supreme Lord, then I, as per my understanding, Prabhu, please correct me, then we don't necessarily have to do all the Shraddha ceremonies or all that. We can do it uh, mm -hmm. for their uh, benefit. But it uh, even if one doesn't do it, then it's still okay because uh, as it is said that if we have hundred dollars, then all ten dollars, ten fifteen dollars, ninety dollars are within that hundred dollars. So in that way, if uh, we surrender to the Supreme Lord, everything is taken care of. That is my understanding. Yes, um, you, you said correctly, Mataji. So one example you you said for Shadda ceremony. Also another example is. Um, as per Vedic culture, Manu Samhita, you have to have a eligible putra or putri, eligible um, children, so that uh, you can repay, you can you know increase your parampara. Your, after you leave, your parampara carries on. But if a person has become a devotee, for example, he's a Naishtik Brahmachari, he has uh, never done marriage, but because he has become a pure devotee, his that debt is automatically removed by Krishna. And Krishna gives in 1866, so, so it is a pap, but for a sadhu, a person, real sadhu, I'm talking, um, that's not a pap because he has surrendered fully himself to Krishna. There's so many Naistic Brahmacharis who became sannyasi in our movement as well and in other places as well. So they don't get pap actually. But for the other person who's being irresponsible, irresponsible, that's a pap. Suppose I'm lazy, I'm not earning money for my family, that's a pap. I'm doing a sin actually. But if I become a pure devotee, I'm completely sheltered, uh, ha have taken shelter um, under Krishna, then it's not a pap anymore. Hmm? Many brahmacharis are there. Uh, very young age, they have joined the temple and they're serving full-time Krishna. They don't get any pap. But if I'm being lazy, irresponsible, um, then that debts apply on me. Oh, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. Yes, one mala a day. <laughs> And then I don't have to earn money. I don't have to take my family responsibility. No, not like that. Just one example. That applies to the same living entity. And as you said, Shraddha ceremony, same thing applies. So if we have taken 100% shelter of Mukunda, as per that verse, uh, the six debts are removed by Krishna. 
Madhuri Mataji, um, yes. is there anything else would you like to get elaboration on? Yeah, and uh, when you are doing the devotional service, we can all uh, pray for our forefathers. Absolutely, or our you family pray for friends, every living entity. Yes, but you don't have to do any formal ceremony necessary. For example, yes. yeah, the yes, ritualistic sir. things are gone. Even while yeah. you are practicing, we should mm. not give too much emphasis to the ritual. Rather, you should mm. give more emphasis to the devotional aspect. Like you can yeah. chant for your forefathers. Yeah. When the Shraddha time comes, now it's coming very soon, I guess in two, three weeks, you can give some rounds to your forefathers, for example. Yeah. So you can yeah. chant one extra round or two extra round. That's very nice. And then you can do the externals as well, but your whole soul is in that devotion part. Yeah. Actually, why I asked this question is recently I have heard in one of the lectures that um, whatever we are doing this shrad ceremony and all, it is not for the departed soul. Departed soul generally takes 90% of uh, departed souls. If they are not gone to ultimate abode, uh, they will take the other body within 12 months, like within one year. It, that is the maximum. Yeah, that, and within that 30 varies. days or... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that varies when do, do they take birth from three yeah. days, 72 so, hours to 10 yeah. Million. yeah. So the, um, maximum they will take acquire another body within one year. And remaining shards every year we do, it is for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Because that karma phala uh, it comes and it is for our benefit. So I think now it makes more sense. Because once we are in the devotional service, we don't need any karma phala from our forefathers or anything. Because we we surpass karma yoga and then go get into bhakti yoga probably that's why i think this is making sense for me now that's yeah. my thought okay um, anyone else has any questions thank you prabhu thank you yeah. mataji thank prabhu you. is it is it five or six deaths prabhu six deaths six deaths yeah and shivam prabhu can recite the verse quickly he is a worse person no <laughs> Okay, it's six. Uh, it's not past it. It's written in verse. Okay, let's move on to our verse six, which we started last week. Okay, let's read that. Anyone volunteers to read this? Okay, I'll read it. Uh, I okay, someone said yes, please. Yes, Vijay Gopi Mata. Uh, I can read it. Really. Oh, sorry. Oh, I mean, sorry. I have read I, it before, but that's okay. If someone else wants to read it, it's okay. Yeah, okay. If someone else can read, because Mataji today read it. Can I read, Prabhu? Yes, yes. Anyone. Drishtai svabhava janitai rvabhusastha loshai You can just continue reading, Mataji. Yes. Na praktatva miha bhakta janasya pashyet Ganga Bashamna Kalubud Buddha Pena Pankai Brahma Dravatam Brahma Dravatam Abagachati Nira Dharmai. Okay, so thank you, Mother. So last week we started the verse and uh, we read the meaning of it. Let's quickly revise what the meaning of each word is. Drishtai, who can say? You can unmute yourself. Even if it's wrong, it's okay. To see. To see. Drashti. It's a Hindi word, right? So you cannot forget that. Sabhav. Everyone knows that. Nature. Nature. So sometimes when we look at the verse, we look at, oh, this is a very big Sanskrit verse. Actually, it's very simple, simple terms um, Rupa Goswami has used. Janitair. Ja means janma. Anyone can give an example from Bhagavad Gita where ja is used? Janma karma samedivyam. Janma karma samedivyam. Number Mataji? Sahib. 4.9. Okay. 4 .9. Another verse from the same chapter, just a couple of verses before that, 4.9, where ja is used. Jaldi, jaldi. <laughs> Shubham Prabhu. Ajopi San Abhyatma. 4.6. Everyone knows that one. Ajopi San Abhyatma. It's before 4.7 and 4.8. So, ja is very, very simple. Aja. Huh? Mm. Or janma, whatever. Vapu. Vapu. Everyone knows Vapu. Body. body. And vapu. Huh? So, body. Vapu. Dosha. Everyone knows dosha. So, we are very good in looking at others' dosha. Not our dosha. Others' dosha. We are very good at that. <laughs> na. Everyone knows. Na. Prakrta. Prakrt. Prakrt means? Prakriti. Prakriti. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Maitraoji. Again. 
Prakrit. Prakrit. Where this word is used, which we have read in previous uh, verse. Prakrit. Prakrit Bhakta. Prakrit Bhakta. Thank you, Mataji. This is when used in where? Materialistic devotee. Yes, but where in this is used? In, in Shikmat Bhagavatam by Haber Muni when he's responding to Nimi Maharaj's question. So Kanishta Adhikari is not using that word. He's using word Prakrit Bhakta. Huh? His eyes, his, his vision is very materialistic basically. Huh? So that's Prakrit Bhakta. Iha. 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 Par. <laughs> Iha. Bhakta Janasya. That is very, very easy. Huh? Pashet. Pashet means kya? To see. To see. So, same thing, drashtai and pashet is used. What's the difference, Vijay Mataji, in the first drashtai and second pashet? First one is to see, and this one is observe. Don't <laughs> see. Don't observe. see. Observe. No, no, both is to see. First is materialistic vision, second is is vision. Uh, so again, the the meaning of these words are not frozen. So it's not like tomorrow Pashya. Anywhere you see Pashya word or Pashyati word is mean a special reason. No, as per the context we see. So here, first is Drashtai used for materialistic vision or like the, our outer vision. And Pashyat here used for spiritual vision. Gangam Hasam, who can say? You can look at your book. That's fine. This is not a test. <laughs> but you're trying to get to know the words because once we know the words, Verse becomes very easy. Otherwise, verse becomes like, oh my God, such a big verse. Gangam Hasam. Ganga water. Ganga water, thank you. <laughs> so simple. Huh? Na Kalu. Kalu. Mohit Prabhuji. Kal. In Hindi, there's a word called Kal. Kal mane? Dusht. But here is Kalu. So Kal mane? Like Kansa was a Kal. Jarasand was a Kal. Uh, is what called Khal Nayak. Now everyone remembers. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Khalu. <laughs> Sundar Gopal Prabhu is nodding his head, at least honestly. <laughs> the Khal word is very popular. It's a, it's a Sanskrit word, actually. Huh? Kansa is uh, Khal is used in Srimad Bhagavatam. Khal. Uh, Budbud. Budbud means? Bubbles. Bubbles. Bubble. Thank you. Pena? Yeah, foam. Word. Foam. Pankai. Mud. 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 Mitti. 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 Kichar. Huh? Kichar. Kichar. I like that word. Kichar. Kichar. Huh? Kichar. So, what are the three qualities are given for the Ganga Basam, Ganga water here? Budbud, Fena, Pankaj. These are the three okay. qualities given. Huh? Now, next line. Brahma Dravatam. Very easy. Ganga That's water. It's not a no. Thank you. It's transcendental. It's a Brahma Drav. Huh? Brahma Dravatam. Apagachati. Spoiled. Spoiled. Thank you. Neera. Water. Neer is a Sanskrit word. Pani. Water. Pani, huh? Water. Dharmai. Dharmai means sabhav. It's a pani ka sabhav. Huh? Neer dharmai means the sabhav, the natural sabhav of pani is to have these three things, which is budbud, fein, panka. But that does not mean Ganga water, which is transcendental, becomes a normal water just because these three things are there. Huh? Similarly, as Ganga water does not become a normal water, although it may have budbud, fein, panka. A spiritual personality almost seemingly may have some material defects in their body, in their uh, in their some habits or conditioning, uh, seemingly, but they are pure transcendental. Now, who can tell me the relation between five and six? Yash Prabhu. In five, we were talking about, uh, like Mataji explained, different types of... Uh, Sorry, I'm not no, no, no. You are but, saying right to no, different types of devotees. You're right. Yeah, yeah. How many types of devotees Mataji explained? Five. Right? No? no not three. Kanishta. Three. Three. Thank you. I was just checking. <laughs> we are all listening. Yeah, <laughs> only yeah. only three types of devotees Shasta describes. Huh? Yeah. What are the three types? Yes, Prabhu Jaldi Jaldi. Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyamadhimkari, Uttam Adhikari. So what what are the two aspects given in verse five? characteristics of these three and our behavior with these three. Huh? So you can say from that perspective, the two things are described. Obviously, three levels of devotee. What are their characteristics and what should be our behavior towards them? Now, what is verse 6 talking about, Shivam Prabhuji, in that relation? So we know three types of devotees. We know what should we do with them. That's fine. Now, what is verse 6 talking about? 
how to associate with uttam adhikari how to associate with uttam adhikari now we have saying uh, ipsit sang labdhya that's what the last line was right in verse 5 ipsit ipsit means to desire i want to have the, that sort of sangha but rupa goswami is saying warning savdhan if you see uttam adhikari with a material vision you'll get stuck you'll get vaishnava parad so he's saying before you ipsit sang labdhya yes 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 i want to see uttam adhikari he should be like a king and you know you will be everything transcendental no 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 wait a second you know we are in the material world so so rupa goswami very kindly giving this verse 6 and saying yes you should desire to associate with uttam adhikari but you know what uttam adhikari may materially look little different than what you expect so this verse is very very important for our protection for our protection yes you should desire but while you are desiring when we are um, associating with that sort of personality externally there may be some faults there be very careful so this verse is very beautiful it's like a, a verse of compassion rupa goswami is giving ha huh? okay this all these things we know um okay let's go forward this overview we already covered that now how many types of um faults propad is going to discuss in this verse seven thank you prabhu ji and the first one here is on the screen criticism of bodily defects who can tell me what's in this picture who hasn't spoken as yet prasanna prabhu hari krishna hari krishna prabhu i told last week you told last week oh sorry <laughs> okay somebody sorry i i don't remember anything i'm just you know choosing anyone ragvi mata would you know what is this picture about he is sanatan goswami thank you mata can you please um, explain a little bit in few lines so i think uh, he has some bodily uh, um boils you can say mata ji ah boils on the and then he did how did it happen is good to know actually wo pata nahi prabhu wo pata nahi no problem no problem you are honest he, go, he had boils so he was not uh... can i add that so just for everyone's benefit yeah. huh? repeating is no problem so sanatan go sami was traveling yes. from brindavan to puri by walk there was no trains or buses so while traveling he is not carrying any bisleri water with him he does not buy his food in govindas <laughs> so he ate whatever he got on the way he drank the water whatever water he got any very long distance no money huh? walking bare feet so because of this uh, thing his body got some infection and the infection was so bad he got boils pus around and the pus was oozing out so you can imagine the the situation of the body anyone will cancel his journey to puri isn't it on the way so to see i was so sick <laughs> i had to stop at uh, you know madhya pradesh <laughs> i could not go to urissa but swatan go some continued yes mata please continue so um i think he doesn't go to um, chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, but chaitanya mahaprabhu still embraces him uh, he's trying to embrace uh, yeah. sanatan goswami out of love, love. he's very happy to see sanatan goswami sanatan goswami is stepping back no 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 no, no. don't touch me don't touch me I'm, why i'm, I'm so dirty so many, yeah. i'm so dirty i'm i'm infectious if you touch me my infection will go in you what's the response of mahaprabhu i think he hugs him and he says uh, महाप्रभु very beautiful but later on as ragvi mata ji said he does go and uh, hugs sanatan goswami and later later not immediately his uh, infection get cured because bhagwan is touching <laughs> what infection can remain huh? even from the heart there will be no infection what to speak of bodily infection um thank you mata ha huh? so chatan mahaprabhu's uh, example in this perspective is is very very nice usually when we see someone like that and again our behavior may be different in bhagavad gita there is a verse where we should have a, a equal vision who can tell that verse very quickly vidya vinay sampadhi vidya vinay sampadhi namane kavi haste so nice ani sai vasat aap and number moy prabhu 518 thank you 518 huh? but does it mean i go and embrace a loin and a and a chandal and a and a hathi all together even a cow sometimes can be very dangerous you know especially the bull one 
they will just say hurry bol and you will be in the hospital <laughs> they're just cuddling you <laughs> they're not hitting you they're just cuddling you trying to cuddle in their language and you will be end up in hospital <laughs> so what should we do but bhagavata uh, bhagavata is saying samdarshi mahasu prabhu ji if someone asks you this question what's the response bhagavata is saying you should be samdarshi but you treat loin differently and a brahman differently a brahman comes to your house you treat differently loin comes to your house you treat differently mahasu prabhu ji what would be the response sorry i'm just asking uh, uh, for the sake of discussion no are okay shivam prabhu he wasn't there <laughs> at that time <laughs> but he can respond he is very padha likha person <laughs> okay anyone else now the we see the paramatma and the uh, yes. soul inside each and every body not yes. the outer covering prabhu yeah but how would you treat a tiger and a brahman you have to smart you have to soul, right huh? You have to be smart. So this, yeah, because you can't even go in front of Loin and say, oh, you, you got Paramatma. <laughs> Let's chant like yeah. Mahaprabhu. He will not see Paramatma uh, in you. Yeah. He will just see, wow, what a Sunday food. feast is coming. Thank you, Paramatma. He will say, thank you for sending me He'll such be, a... Thank you, thank you, Paramatma, enough for sending uh, uh, the food. Uh, and he will just uh, relish. So we should not see only at material or only at transcendental level. We should see like... we should use some intelligence as well so for example you gave the example of you know doctor treating a patient they also cover their face with a mask and you know wear gloves while they do that okay that's good uh, more the dif- the pro- the difference between the two is the, the tiger actually is in a uh, covered uh, his consciousness is covered and he is in a different body yeah but we can also say i'm just saying for the sake of argument this chandal consciousness is covered this brahman consciousness is very elevated शास्त्र समदर्शी सुनी चाइव शपाके चा शपाके शपाके में जो कुत्ते का मांस पका के खाता है वन कुक्स द डॉग मीट इट इज कंसीडर एक्सट्रीमली लो ना अवतार प्रभु वी आर स्टक प्रभु प्लीज हेल्प वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट इट एक्चुअली इन डिटेल ओके similar response bro we should be practical in our but what's the definition that's what i'm coming down to you you're right bro i'm not saying you you're wrong just coming down to some more uh, you know solid answer there you know right. practicality definitely we understand tiger is tiger brahman yeah. is brahman that's fine pra- practicality based on the acharan the activities of so we know with tiger we can't have the same उसमे When grandmothers comes to your house, your young children are coming in your house. Young children, you give ice creams and cakes and what not. The grandmother, you give a loki ka soup, <laughs> and that is some darshi. That is some darshi. Why? That is beneficial for the grandmother. If you give, I'm some darshi. I'll only give cake and uh, ice creams to every single guest all the time. Not everyone will like it. Uh, I want loki ka sabji and roti, <laughs> some simple dal chawal. Huh? so our behavior will be different based on different social positions and based on our realizations as well huh? and that is compulsory if we treat tiger uh, nitanand prabhu can do that he can go to the crocodile and and slap him say chant hari krishna <laughs> we can't do chatur mahaprabhu can go in jhari khand forest and ask tigers and elephants to chant hari krishna and they chant that's fine that's bhagwan um, so we cannot imitate them like that we can follow in their footsteps okay so when we see a bodily defect in someone why does the bodily defect come madri mata ji someone having pus someone having this kush rog leprosy someone is coughing cancer past karma past karma thank you any other ideas that's good answer any other ideas 
with the okay. devotees things happen because of the uh, lord's uh, mercy don't think lord for now just for a second <laughs> otherwise everything is uh, you understand the materialistic person when do we suffer when we have done bad or good karma now we don't call it when we become rich when we get lottery we get lot of fame we don't call it suffering but that's also suffering of your karma your karma is getting exhausted when you become rich or famous actually your karma stock is getting exhausted so you are in a good or bad shape it's all due to your karma now sanatan goswami suffering this jay dharma prabhu lot of papa he must have done right what's the response sanatan goswami suffering this disease right now we just talking here i think it's physically and the word he has put in that's it he has been put in this physical situation the devotees are so soft <laughs> yes or no i just want simple answer vinay vinay prabhu ji or to glorify okay. yes he is a sapadi in the word the answer ha ji he show us to sapadi but um, actually uh, show us like how the god mercy and comes uh, compassion he has yeah. kind of thing so when Prabhupada ji ha having heart attack for example and a, a sannyasi apparently having you know some body disease and all that um first thing which comes to a materialistic person's mind he is a sannyasi and he is suffering he must have done bad karma in the past huh? so generally speaking i'm saying materialistic vision is when we see a suffering what we see if we know the philosophy of karma that he, this person must have done bad karma because the reaction of their bad karma he is suffering now is it right materialistic vision huh? but when it comes to devotional aspect devotional realm rupa goswami is giving us a very different view we cannot criticize someone based on their bodily ailments for example thinking uh, it's his uh, karma rather we should think about our dharma so not think about the karma what sanatan goswami for example has done is between him and krishna but if a devotee suppose needs some medical assistance and you can assist him will you say prabhu ji you are suffering your karma you must have done very bad activity you know what i'll give you an advice you keep suffering you exhaust your karma fast and go back to god it is that very nice then all the devotee care department will just you know go in uh, the box that's not how we are supposed to treat why this devotee is a very sincere devotee needs some medical help or you know some other help like that which you can provide what should you do maharaj bharat picked up the baby deer was it right or wrong sundar gopal prabhu maharaj bharat picked up the baby deer was it right or wrong don't give me the big answer <laughs> right or wrong it was right in the right. sense because we had that <laughs> in the sense <laughs> yeah. okay. it was right prabhu right or wrong rasanand prabhu <laughs> just two options you don't have third options it was right yes. right. right right who will say not right ragvi mata which party you are in <laughs> right or wrong because acharya say many time right uh, because of the deer he fell down madri mata ragvi mata it's right right Ma ragvi mata confidently right. say yes or no and be confident if you know you are wrong yes. no problem sab yes bol rahe hain to hum bhi yes bol dete hain <laughs> everyone is saying yes i will also say yes no it is because 100% right it was 100 our acharya has explained it was 100% right a devotee has to be compassionate if a devotee is not compassionate he is not a devotee lord is made up of 100% but his behavior later on with the deer was 100% right at that moment if you see someone suffering and you do not attend to that person you are not a devotee sorry you're not a devotee now how you deal with that person you know beggar comes you have to deal with him differently but the point is your heart should say i want to do something for this person huh? he's suffering huh? that time we should not think he is suffering for his karma thank you krishna thank you very very nice huh let, let his suffering or her suffering continue not like that the devotee is very very compassionate person this is the first definition so any time we see any body defects in something in someone we do not criticize we do not bring the philosophy of karma in between what we bring upon what is my dharma what can i do for this person in a genuine way why is this person is suffering this up to if you are a judge and a person comes to you i have been robbed you know someone has stolen my 100000 dollars you say prabhu you must be suffering your bad karma in last birth you would have stolen from this person so this birth he is stealing from you okay hari krishna case dismissed chalega nahi chalega a baby is crying and mother is looking at the baby oh my baby is suffering the karma no no mother is producing new new karma huh? 
So a baby is crying or whatever the needs of the babies are, mother has to attend, father has to attend. That's our dharma. So we do not bring this karma philosophy. Why we bring karma philosophy? So that in future, me, I, don't do the bad activities because I will be accountable for that. If I steal from someone, tomorrow I'll be in trouble. If I disrespect someone, I will get up a man tomorrow. This is going to happen. So what I should be doing, I should bother about it in future, not what other is suffering for. So criticism of bodily defects of anyone, especially devotees, especially devotees, we cannot have. We cannot have. Even Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Apiche sudracharo bhajate maam ananya bhag. So even if he has done sudurachar in the past, right now what is he doing? Bhajate maam ananya bhag. Right now he is doing exclusive bhajan of mind. What will be the result? 31. Shipram bhavati dharmatma. Shipram, very, very fast, he will become dharmatma person. So we should be very, very careful of um, anyone, ex uh, especially devotees, if their body is not so uh, well, um, they have some disease or <coughs> the body look is not good, huh? their skin has some problem and all those things. Now we gave um, two examples last time. Uh, so Sanatan Gosai was one. Then we gave example of Ganeshji, Chandrama, Moon, laughing at Ganeshji, Chandrama got the curse. And we also gave the example of Ashtavakra Muni, who is an extremely knowledgeable person, but some heavenly um, girls, Apsaras, they laughed at Ashtavakra Muni and they got the curse as well. He has written Ashtavakra Gita, even Janak Maharaj, uh, Videha, he is uh, one of the Mahajan, he also takes Siksha from Ashtavakra Muni, such a great. But by some arrangement of Krishna, his body is bent at eight places. So some people um, laughed at them. So we can see the results. So Shastra is teaching us through these examples. They're extremely high. Uh, we should not do that mistake. Okay. Uh, Rasan Prabhu, you have a question? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, sorry, related to the previous one, Prabhu. Uh, yes, we can understand that it's uh, like we should not tell them it's because of your karma, your suffering. But if, if suppose a devotee is really not like... Even think, not even telling him, we should not even think. Think. Yeah. yeah, but if they come and ask, why am I suffering like that? You know, if they come, like, probably they are on the deathbed or something. I've got so yes, much yes. disease. And uh, yes. if they come and ask, what should be our response to them? Uh, so time, place and circumstances is the first response. We should judge what this devotee is going through. And maybe this devotee is very humble. Bhakti Sarnath Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Gaurkishwar Das, Babaji Maharaj, when he left his body, you know what he said? He said, I'm so sinful that you should bind my body with the tail of a dog and drag it around the dham so that my body gets some purification. And some so-called Babajis were about to do that. Bhakti Sarnath Maharaj said, no one dare to touch the body of my Guru Maharaj. Huh? No one dare to touch. And he defeated an argument. He said he said that out of humility. So if you are saying a situation is on a deathbed, um, mostly, mostly if he's a sincere Vaishnava or Vaishnavi, he's staying out of humility. And she or he is not saying wrong. They feel like that. But you should not be advising, yes, Prabhuji, you are right. You are right. No, no, no. This out of humility. Sometimes another um, aspect can be they are in the wrong mental frame. You should always encourage them. No, no, Prabhuji, it's not because of you. Mahini Mataji, I've done this bad karma, that bad karma. That time you're not advising that person. That time you have to elevate that person. Look at the situation. You have to, for elevation. And Chaitanya Chaitanya Prabhu gives a rule of plus, minus, plus. Plus, minus, plus. Plus means you always appreciate or encourage that person. Again, I'm talking in a genuine way. I'm not talking in a bettering way. That is a, a representation of false ego, Mara said. In a genuine way. Plus means you encourage for those things which this person has done right. Minus where there is a room of improvement. And then plus you close up with a plus. This is the way you deal with any Vaishnava. Because that way you're, you're giving him or her opportunity to improve what they have done well. There would be some plus, right? And then you're also telling them in truth in a very encouraging and nice, sensitive way. You should be very sensitive when you're telling minuses. <laughs> because no one listens the pluses, they listen minus. <laughs> anyway, so minus when you tell, and you should be honest, genuine. If he is asking you, then if you're uh, in that position to advise, you say, Prabhuji, I think in my limited understanding, you can improve this. Huh? You can please improve your Mangala Arti. You can improve your chanting. This is my little understanding. Huh? And then you plus. But your enthusiasm for coming to temple is really, really nice, Prabhuji. Very, very nice. You come so often. You live so far, you still come so often. Huh? 
So you can encourage them. You can tell them the room improvement, a plus minus plus. So time, place, circumstances, understand his humility, understand if you are in a position to advise him and we'll talk about it. Um, and then finally, from a dealing from Vaishnava perspective, peer level, plus minus plus. If you follow this, generally the response will be encouraging. Your meeting with that Vaishnava will be very fruitful, very, very fruitful. He will leave you with a very positive feeling. You will leave with a positive feeling. If that helps you, Mataji. Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, Madhuri, Madhuri. Yes. Prabhu, um, devotee should know this fact that it is because of our uh, past karma. One, we uh, you have mentioned just now, so that we will not do such mistakes for, uh, for future. And another one, if, if we are facing any problem, we should think that this is because of our past karma somewhere we must have done some yes, mistakes yes, that's and, for us yeah yeah and tackle the problem uh but not that oh i'm doing so much devotional service but still lord is doing uh, lord is not taking care we should not think that Prabhupada okay. said very clearly um if you have a cut in your finger for example so a devotee thinks a sincere devotee my hand was about to get cut off krishna only gave a cut in the finger so devotee is happy always happy he get an accident. He said, oh, I was about to die, but Krishna saved me. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he has a fracture in his hand. He said, my whole body was going to get fractured. Krishna only gave a little fracture. Devotee is always happy. Everything mm -hmm. he sees through um, as a mercy of the Lord. Now, this is an advanced state, but mm -hmm. we can apply this karma uh, philosophy for us, not for mm -hmm. others. When you're dealing with others, especially when he needs help, or actually yes. you should be sensitive enough to give help, even if he doesn't ask for it. That's a devotee. Yes. That's a devotee, not that Mother Ji, can you please give me that? And like, oh, okay, Prabhu, I'll think about it. <laughs> we should be so appreciative of each other that uh, before even this person opens the mouth, we should be able to present ourselves. No, no, we, we will not be able to do in every situation, but this is how our deep our friendship should be with the devotees. And then we have such a great bonding. And then we develop, then we develop as a family, which is what Prabhupada mm -hmm. dreamt. Not like, oh, he's another devotee from, from Africa, he's from America. Are, devotee is a devotee, not from America, not from South India, not North India, not a Vidwan, not a Murk. Devotee is a devotee and you should have that bonding. And then yes. literally it encourages in our life. Huh? Even you can give some sweet words, encouraging sweet words to that person if he's in you know, some down state sometime. But such type of physical... Philosophy, never... Yes. Yes. But such type of physical pain, yes. when devotee is feel, facing like terrible physical pain, yes. and in that case, how a devotee should think? Like, so, it, so first thing is you should read what he needs. Does he need a mental support? Does he need a physical support? No, we have, for ourselves, Prabhu. A devotee, for, ourselves, if, for ourselves, no problem. I, I think I shared one oh, instance, very been. nice. Um, there was one Maharaj from another Sampradaya, not from our Sampradaya, but I heard this story from uh, his grand disciple. This Mataji mm -hmm. was telling, um, I saw a little video, very nice, inspiring video, another Vaishnava Sampradaya. So she said uh, her Guru Maharaj went to see her Pura Param Guru Maharaj, who was very, very old, 80s or something. He had some bodily problem. He had to be hospitalized. He was in ICU. And there were like, you know, 20 places in injection was there in his body. So when his Guru Maharaj uh, went to see his his Guru Maharaj, and uh, while he was leaving, he said, I'll pray to Srimati Radharani that you get well soon. Huh? That's what he said, and that's a very genuine statement. And you know what his Param Guru Maharaj said? Is Radharani not merciful right now? Is Radharani not merciful right now? So you will pray that I will become better. I will become better, right? But he said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Is Radharani not merciful right now? Now, we will become very happy if someone says like that, please, Prabhuji, please pray for me. Mm -hmm. I'm having a lot of pain. Now, again, it's at one stage, but we can just appreciate this Vaishnava is on the deathbed. He's an 80 plus. He has 20 injections going through his body, terrible pain, but he's completely happy in that state. He's not thinking, mm -hmm. Radharani will make me better. Radharani is making me the best. Right now, I'm in the best state. Now it's a very high state, but we can appreciate. So nothing in the world is, is worse. Chaitanya Charan Prabhu says, even the worst situation can be made more worse. If your one hand is broken, he said, both hands could have been broken. Your only one hand is broken. You lost yeah. one leg, both legs could have gone. So, so it's just for ourselves, not for others. 
the a devotee is always happy devotee takes positive as krishna's mercy negative as krishna's mercy krishna thank you so much my powers are going you are making me realize you are able you are making my vision complete um, in the shastra and when success come all glories to my guru maharaj all glories to these wonderful devotees huh? who has given me eligibility through which i so called i have got success actually it's not um, i'll give one example i just remember in my mind when prabhupad was very successful many of his god brothers did not appreciate prabhupad prabhupad made one statement on that many statements came but one statement very nice prabhupad said you know actually we are all as a god family i'm talking is doing the work of our guru maharaj huh? which is bhakti siddhant maharaj work right establishing temples making devotees he said as a god family we are doing our guru maharaj work now while we are doing our guru maharaj work guru maharaj has used me as an instrument to do his work majority of the work right so why these god brothers are envious eventually it's guru maharaj work now no one sees like that huh? this is prabhupad's temple prabhupad's disciple but prabhupad has a vision it is my guru maharaj uh, seva which i am doing you say my guru maharaj is using me to do the seva why they are envious <laughs> such a simple and profound statement prabhupad is not thinking my is gone huh? He's saying, my Guru Maharaj is sending all these uh, so-called disciples so that I can serve them. So it's just a change of vision. Devotee is always happy. And if he's not happy, we should encourage that devotee um, through Shastra, through personal behavior. And based on his situation, that time, um, come up, Prabhuji, come up, come up. Um, Krishna is always kind. Krishna is, is never leaving you. Anyway, detailed discussion, how we console someone else. <laughs> You get the point, Mataji. Any other uh, things? Okay, I hope not. Um, Ujjala Samata. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I just want to share <coughs> one um, one thing which I heard in lecture with Swayam Bhagwan Keshav Sam Keshav Maharaj. Yes. Uh -huh. um, in Bhakti Vedanta manner, there was a devotee who was um, 31 years of old mm. and uh, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm. And um, uh, basically, he, he lived for another five years, but um, then he was sharing his, uh, uh, while he was um, uh, leaving the body, uh, uh, Swami Bhagavan Keshav Swami was with him. And uh, that person, I don't remember his name, but he shared uh, his um, uh, last moments that the last five years, he lived for five years after the uh, diagnosis. So they were the best, uh, deepest spiritual realizations in, uh, those years. And he formed the greatest relationships and uh, the most joyful years. So that was amazing. Yes. So, and he, 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 he was called a smiling monk, actually. Smiling monk. I also heard about him in, in Swami Bhagavan Kesha Maharaj lecture. Yeah, he was sharing. It was very nice. See, he got diagnosed with cancer and then he said, I lived the best years of my life. Huh? This happens many times. So when the negative time comes in our life, they may be the best years of our life because Krishna comes very close to us. We have no other shelter except Krishna. So devotee is always happy. Okay, thank you everyone for nice realizations. Okay, now second one we, I think, discussed last week, started discussing about the birth. Birth is a very, very important factor, especially if we are coming from <laughs> Indian background. <laughs> birth becomes uh, a quite high things. I'm a Brahman. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a Shudra. <laughs> we, we have so much sort of that vision. Uh, let's see what Truva Goswami says. So, even if not from Brahman or Goswami family, a devotee is always a devotee. Uh, many times from our disciples, uh, Western body disciples, were not uh, welcomed in Vrindavan. I heard one instance... And Prabhupada came for the first time, if I'm not wrong, or the second time. Probably the first time. Prabhupada wanted to do parikrama of the seven Goswami temples in Vrindavan, which we all of us do when we go there. Except Radharaman temple, all the other Goswamis from other temples, they shut down their temple when these people are doing parikrama. Can you imagine that? They were so angry. They were so angry. Huh? Only Radharaman Raman temple. Uh, was open. Every other temple they shut down. How come these western people have become brahmanas and they are coming to our temple with us? Stop them. They will not even touch the money given by these western bodied uh, devotees. Not touch the money. They say they are exchanging you know, 10 rupees. They say leave the 10 rupees here and then they will take it later. <laughs> and they will wash the, the rupee. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada was just laughing at these sort of uh, interactions. Huh? So much happened actually in the beginning days. 
Now everything is sort of fine, but uh, yeah. Who is a Goswami? Prabhupada says, the Goswami is a title, is a monopoly of a pure devotee. If you're a pure devotee, you're a Goswami. Huh? What's the opposite of Goswami? Anyone remembers? Goswami and? Godas. 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 What does Goswami mean? The master of the senses. Master of the senses. And Go means senses. Das is servant of the senses. Now, one of the Prabhupada, Western body disciple, one day he went to one temple, not name it. Um, he saw the, the Goswami, the pujari of that temple was eating some prashad and smoking <laughs> while eating prashad. And he came back and told Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was like, this is how they are. Now we cannot say for everyone, but many of them, they drink and um, they smoke and all those things. And they still call themselves a Goswami. Prabhupada said, Goswami is a person who has controlled his senses. That's the meaning. Not that one who has taken birth in his family. Huh? Now his son or his daughter, very respected, but um, are they Goswamis? We don't know. We don't know. So the definition of Goswami is one who has controlled his mind and senses. That's a Goswami, not just taken birth. Um, a Goswami, Prabhupada said, not a hereditary title. It's not a hereditary title that my father was a Goswami. Like my father was a judge. Will I become a judge? Prabhupada said, I will not become. Yeah, I may be facilitated to become judge by my father. He may create more facilities for me. Uh, but that does not entitle me to become a judge or me to become a doctor just because my father. So why I will become a Goswami? Hmm? Prabhupada said, he is non-envious and he is prideless. Yes, Ujjwala uh, Samataji or Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, yeah, I had once heard when, I, when we were doing the yatras and all that uh, from a devotee, we heard that when we go to the yatras or any dham basically, uh, we should be very, very careful when we see different things which we do not understand, like somebody as you mentioned, they are smoking or, you know, behave, not behaving correctly. So in our mind also, we should not judge or label them. Hmm. We should just leave them because that will affect our bhakti. Yes. I think we're discussing about um, Jagannath Puri. Similar point which Mataji is saying. Uh, people don't follow Ekadashi. Just one one example. Then Again, why they don't follow Ekadashi is up to them. But we follow Ekadashi even in Jagannath. When they say to escon people, and I've heard it live, um, okay, you can follow Ekadashi but not in Jagannath Puri. Jagannath Puri, you are uh, exempted. They say like that. And our Acharya says, no, even in Jagannath Puri, all of us, when we go for Yatra, we follow Ikadashi. Simple as that. Huh? So their, their Acharya can tell whatever. That's fine. We respect that. But our Acharya still strictly follow Ikadashi every single time. Okay, um, just moving on. Now, Goswami families, just looking at this chart, this is the words of Prabhupada, not my words. So Goswami families may criticize uh, the other and Prabhupada, right? They protest Goswami title given to American Vaishnavas. They protest. As I said, they, they shut down their temple that these uh, Vaishnavas cannot enter into my temple. Huh? They are not Vaishnavas. They are Malekshas. They used to actually call them on their face. You guys are Malekshas. One day when Prabhupada disciple uh, in Vrindavan, he went to a temple. One of the temples he went, one of the Goswami temples he went and uh, there uh, uh, one uh, Pujari was there and he said, uh, you keep worshipping uh, like this in this body and later on you will uh, take birth in Vrindavan. Huh? Later on you will take Vrindavan. He came back, this disciple came back to Prabhupada and, and said what this Goswami said. He said, go and tell that Goswami, you keep worshipping uh, the deities like that. And later on you will take birth in America and then you will get associated with this account. That was Prabhupada's statement. Huh? Prabhupada was very bold and very protective, very, very protective for all his disciples. Very encouraging. He said, you tell that Pujari, you keep worshipping. I, I forgot the exact name, so I don't want to um, tell the wrong name here. Radha, that deity. And he said, then you will take birth in America. You will get associated with Eskon. You will get opportunity to, to be the part of Sankirtan movement, worldwide Sankirtan movement. And this is what he was so happy. Because huh? these people are constantly discouraging these disciples. Prabhupada was always protective, very, very protective. Huh? He said, the, um, not envious of Western, you should not be envious of Western sannyasi just because their body is Western. Burijan Prabhu, in one lecture, he was saying, uh, their body may, may have taken birth in a dirty American body. That's what Burijan Prabhu said. Huh? Mm -hmm. huh? Dirty American body. Huh? So body was dirty American. But then when they surrendered to Prabhupada, they became pure Vaishnavas. Huh? After surrendering to Prabhupada and following his instructions sincerely, they are not proud of their birth, huh? whether they have taken birth in Vrindavan or in America. 
Well, so birth, we should never criticize. And we also discuss, oh, we discussed that. Huh? Haridas Sakura, we already discussed that. So let's move on. Hanumanji, uh, who is this? Uh, last time, Madhuri Mataji explained. Anyone else? Not Madhuri Mataji, not Madhuri Mataji. Ramana, Ramana, Ramana his wife. Yeah, that's in the blue sari. Who's the other person? Kanchipurna. <laughs> Kanchipurna, Kanchi thank you, mother. Kanchipurna. So we discuss about his pastime. So a devotee is a devotee, no matter which family he has taken birth in. Um, another um, positive example is can be Prahlad Maharaj, Vibhishan. Huh? By body, they were Daityas. But they were the Mahajans. Huh? They were the Mahajans. Okay, let's move on. Material vision. We should not have any material vision towards a Vaishnava. Who is this in the picture? Shubham Prabhu. He knows this very big picture. That's okay. That's okay. It's just a picture, but... Uh... Is that Pundarik Vidyanidhi? Thank you. Pundarik so Vidyanidhi. Thank you so much. Pundarik huh? Vidyanidhi. Now, what's the past time? Who can tell? He was a very rich person yes. and he used to have all the opulences. And then uh, Gadadhar Pandit uh, had visited uh, along with, who was that? Mukunda. Uh, Mukunda. Yeah, Mukunda. Yeah. And uh, Gadadhar Pandit, when he saw the opulences, he was thinking, how come he is a devotee? And then because uh, he was, you know, he had a pan, uh, pan dani and then Mukunda. he had all these uh, nice, uh, you know, oil was on his hair and yes. beautiful uh, cushions and everything like it was all opulent. So then uh, uh, Mukunda, uh, he's, he understood the mind of Gadadhar Pandit. And so he started singing the verse where okay. Putana, uh, Lord gave the mercy to Putana. And when he saw, when he heard that, he started tearing his clothes and rolling on the floor and nobody could stop him. That's when uh, Gadadhar Pandit realized his true uh, position as a pure devotee. And uh, I think he took shelter of him and then uh, surrendered to him. Thank you. Very nice. So Gadadhar Pandit mentally thought, he did not say anything from the mouth. So many times we may also feel, um, say for example, a rich person, uh, many times they may not be devotees, but it does not necessarily stop them to become devotees. Huh? The rich person can be a great devotee, Ambrish Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, they are the world leaders, they are the greatest devotees. So we should not have material vision. We cannot judge the from the activities of Vaishnava how advanced he is. Huh? So when he heard the verse, when I say activities, external activities, I mean, when he heard the words, then his response, and Gadada Pandit was like, Pani, Pani. <laughs> he said, oh, I have done a great offense. He went back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he, he explained his heart. And he said, what should I do to counteract my offense? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, go and take shelter of that Vaishnava. And then he became uh, the disciple. Gadada Pandit became disciple of Pundrik Nidhyanidhi. Just on the sideline, who's Pundrik Nidhyanidhi in Krishna Leela? Nishabhanu. Haribo. Thank you. Like, Pura. answer was on that Tip of the tongue of Mataji. Huh? <laughs> very nice. So we should not have one, one very good example. Material vision. Whether they are poor, whether they are rich, whether they have some bodily defect, whether they have some bodily pus, whatever it is, our vision should be Vaishnav transcendental. Because if we mix this material and transcendental, we may get stuck with a big problem actually. Big, big Vaishnav of Prad. Um, Chaitanya Chalan Prabhu said very nicely, we should have, you know, these two things. One is the material vision. One is the spiritual vision. Our, we should not have just the material vision so that we cannot see spiritual side of that person at all. We should not have just the spiritual side. Suppose, as I said, if he has corona, if I'm just seeing the spiritual side, will I get corona if I go and serve him just without any mask? So as someone said, uh, even a doctor goes and protect himself huh? because we're not on such a high level. So we protect ourselves materially, whatever we have to wear the gloves for serving the Vaishnavas. We have to wear a mask. We have to take some precaution. We do that. But we still serve that Vaishnava, whatever possible uh, by us. Okay? So, Prabhupada said, not observe actions of pure devotee from material perspective. Huh? Because Gadadhar Pandit, as in this case, was just observing from material perspective. Should see how he is serving the Lord, which he saw in the part two episode after Mukunda uh, was uttering that verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. What's the original of external vision? Why we have this um, external vision? Why we see these sort of people with the external vision? Four reasons Prabhupada gives. Things that KC is limited to a 
three three reason for path game certain section of people like people only from india can become devotees people only brahman caste can become devotees people only no sanskrit can become devotees for example huh? one um, time i think in madras if i'm not wrong chennai Prabhupada was with his uh, white disciples and he did uh, some program. After the program, when um, Chennai, Madrasi Brahman came and he said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, your uh, disciples are very nice, but you know, they don't pronounce the shloka nicely. So Prabhupada said, uh, okay, so do you know nice pronunciation? He said, yes, yes, I'm a big pandit. I can, I can teach them. Prabhupada said, oh, please teach, please teach. But he said, Prabhupada, I live very fast. Prabhupada said, you can stay in the temple. You can stay in the temple. But Prabhupada, you know, but Prabhupada said, but when you live in the temple, you should, ha you have to leave your uh, coffee. Because <laughs> the Madrasi people, uh, sometimes they, they are very fond of coffee. He said, Prabhupada, I cannot quit coffee. He said, oh, you cannot quit coffee. And they have left their country, their land, their wealth, their identification, everything. Now who is greater? And this man was completely shut. And he was convinced. He was convinced. Prabhupada, they are greater. <laughs> huh? Within one conversation, Prabhupada could see he had little pride that he could pronounce the Sanskrit shlokas very nicely. Prabhupada defeated his pride, defeated his pride. He said, you cannot quit coffee for a few days. Prabhupada did not say for the whole life. He said, for a few days, we'll arrange you to live in the temple and train these, these people. No, Prabhupada, I can't live without coffee. <laughs> okay, so let them pronounce incorrectly. And as the famous saying goes, huh? Prabhupada says, their pronunciation may not be correct, but their renunciation is very great. Renunciation is very great. So, Many times we become very pumped up. I know Sanskrit shlokas more than you. So what? We cannot impress Krishna with our Sanskrit shlokas. Okay. Certain section of devotees can become devotees. Again, um, we can discuss that. Certain tract of land, huh? A specific land people can become devotees, not other land devotees. Um, okay. Yes, I forgot. We have some examples here. So who is this in the picture? What's happening? Who can say? Prema Bhakti Mataji is silently sitting and just hearing mm -hmm. if you are available, Mata. Okay, maybe she is doing some other services. Satyam Mataji, would you like to say something? Yes, Prabhu Jay Vijay. Jay Vijay, what's happening here? So they're trying to enter. Yes. Um, Four Kumaras are trying to enter. Jay Vijay is stopping them. So, yes. what's the relevance of this example on this page? So, the relevance is, Prabhu, that uh, we may think that we have done lots of auspicious things, but only by the mercy of the our Guru Maharaj, uh, we would be able to enter the Golok. Uh, yes, I, I, I was just limited to this example. So, Jay Vijay was looking at four Kumaras with external vision. They are little boys. They are going to enter into Vaikuntha and disturb the sleep of our master. My master, Vishnu, is resting and these little boys may disturb. So, this was the material vision of Jay and Vijay. And for that, they got punished. Isn't it? They got this curse from uh, four Kumaras that you have to go back to material, go, go to the material world and take three birds or seven birds. We know the whole part. So, you understand? Because they were looking at material. So, if we also look at materially, we may get very offensive actually sometime because um, Jay and Vijay, one example, many lessons from the story, one lesson is there. Thank you, Mataji. Um, what's happening in this picture? Who can say? Shubham Prabhuji. Sitting silently today. He's going to tell this past time. Uh... This is uh, sorry, bro. Already said that actually. <laughs> no problem, bro. No problem. It's just a small picture, so you may not recognize. Mohit Prabhu, please. This is Jarabharat Prabhu, and it's thank you. King Jarabharat Prabhu. Prabhu. <laughs> Prabhu. 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 And he was trying to uh, avoid uh, push, uh, jumping on the end. So he was uh, walking like um, uh, carefully so he won't jump on the end. So the king was uh, like saying bad words so that you can't even you know, walk uh, nicely and all this stuff. And then when he found out about that, Jadabharaj is a great devotee when he was talking, he was explaining him why he's doing this. And then 
he talk hmm. about uh, spirituality then in that case so, so just basically stop here, Prabhu ji. Yeah, we'll just take there. a step back. yes yes so initially rahugan maharaj saw jad bharat as material. just a, just a Normal. materialistic shudra person huh, who is carrying my palanquin because his dress was very dirty his uh, dhoti was very very dirty and his body was not very uh, attractive looking body so based on that material vision rahugan offended jad bharat is it right and Jad Bharat was a Mahabhagwat. And when he realized, I put one more picture here. What happened in this picture? Who can say? Mahasa Prabhuji, last picture. After listening to the instructions from Jad Bharat, Rahugan surrenders to Jad Bharat and becomes his disciple. Yes. Although he like is a king, Rahugan is a king, but still he surrenders to uh, Jad Bharat. He asks for forgiveness. For so forgiveness. He says. I'm I'm not afraid of fighting with Indra. I'm not afraid of Vajra of Indra, but I'm very much afraid of offending a Vaishnava. This is a statement in Bhagavatam. I'm very much afraid of offending a Vaishnava. So you please be pleased with me and do not uh, take my other sentences very seriously, please. So he's asking for forgiveness after recognizing because he was himself a, a potential Vaishnava. He was going to hear from Kapiladev. So he was such a nice question. After He made a mistake. He made a mistake, but he realized his mistake. He asking for forgiveness. So if we ever uh, have done this mistake or, you know, we're still doing this mistake, looking Vaishnavas with the material vision, just because he doesn't look good, he cannot speak English properly, he cannot um, quote shlokas properly, that can be very, very offensive. Very, very offensive. Huh? Uh, there are some examples on the screen. Thank you. Um... Okay, Prabhupada goes to the next one. We should not be jealous of Vaishnava. Raghvi Mataji, who's in the picture? No idea. Priya Mataji. Sorry, Mataji, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Okay, um, maybe... She's uh, not able to unmute. Uh, Navatar Prabhu? Uh, Prabhu, this is Shiva and um, Prajap Daksh Prajapati. Thank you. What's happening? Just a few lines. So, Daksh Prajapati, uh, uh, in his um, Raj Sabha, I think this is the one where everyone gets up and uh, res pays respect to him, except uh, Shivji. And then that makes him jealous that make, unsettles his whole um, you know, Rajasic mentality and then he starts uh, saying bad words to yes. Shivji. Yeah. Thank you. So um, just for everyone's benefit, so you can see Lord Shiva is sitting and Daksh Prajapati who was the head of the whole Sabha and when he walks inside that uh, Sabha, that assembly, everyone bows down to Daksh Prajapati except two people, Brahmaji and Lord Shiva. Brahmaji being his father, obviously he doesn't have to get up, but he was expecting, Daksha was expecting that Shivji also will get up and do pranams to me. Shivji did not do because Shivji was busy in his meditation to Vasudev. Shivji clearly says that. And Daksha got very angry. <laughs> very, very angry. So he was very jealous uh, from early and then now he openly, publicly expressed his jealousy. Now, We'll not go into the whole story, but the point here is if you are jealous of a passion, why he is getting more respect, not me, can be very, very offensive. Huh? He is getting respect. Um, Krishna is arranging that way. <laughs> Sometimes uh, when a junior person, junior in the terms of time, I'm saying, you know, we, you may be a devotee for the last 15 years. He only became devotee two years ago. How come he is getting so much recognition in the temple, in the community? I'm not. I haven't got that as much. And you may mentally, mentally think about it. This is not good. This is not good. And you may think bad about that Vaishnava. So many times, many times, not all the time, we are not able to accept that he or she can be more advanced than me. And that can be very dangerous for our bhakti. And what happened to Taksha? We all know. He had to actually leave his body eventually. And even the next body says his mentality of criticism did not go. And he cursed Narad Muni. Even in the next body, he carried over. So when we are jealous, especially with other Vaishnavas, 
um, very very dangerous very very dangerous and when we you know when like minded people come together then they express their heart to each other yes yes prabhu ji you are right and this yes yes prabhu ji you are also right and then the whole thing goes no 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 we are here to do krishna katha we are not to do jealous katha huh? because people will have faults right even if they have genuine faults are we here to correct their faults are we here to become fault conscious of others or krishna conscious why are we here for we are here my guru mara said very clearly we are not here to become a scholar we are not here to become fault finders we are not here to become police for others i am going to correct we are here to become we are here to become what krishna conscious krishna conscious of krishna and as radhanath mala said even in the absence of krishna we are being conscious of krishna absence means of physical i'm talking like the deities uh, so we are here to become krishna conscious this goal should be very very clear guru mara said we are not here to become a scholar uh, a scholar cannot impress krishna keshav kashmiri could not impress krishna so if you are a scholar very very nice if you using that seva uh, for for the seva of krishna that's very nice or any other material skills but we are here to become krishna conscious so even if they have faults we are not here to talk about their faults because if we talk about it we go backwards whatever happens to them that's up to them but we go backwards and the best example is daksh prajapati and lord shiva yes ujjwala samata ji or prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu yeah just krishna. one quick question i was curious about something like you mentioned uh, king rahuguna he begged forgiveness from jada bharat so he had offended him first and then he realized his position how he was a mahabhagavat and he asked for forgiveness so in the first place he had offended so would there be a reaction or no. once he is forgiven the, the re reaction no. is no more. yes so that's why they say if you offend a vaishnava for whatever reason you go and beg for forgiveness from the same vaishnava uh, suppose you have offended a so you should not say b tell a that <laughs> i feel sorry <laughs> no no you go to a if you can now if a has left the body or something then you tell krishna you tell krishna if a has left the body for example but if you sincerely apologize your aparad is forgiven and radhanath maharaj says very nice thing i really like this statement of maharaj he said if if someone has offended you for example if someone has offended you and he asks come and beg for forgiveness we will feel very great dekha ab pata chala <laughs> look at this huh? now he is realizing his mistake and i was right and this person was wrong we feel great but maharaj said a vaishnava is someone who who forgives even before offending so even before someone offends you you forgive him beforehand that is a vaishnava and i'm like what i stand that what i stand huh? so not that he, he came for uh, asking for apology and you forgive that's nice and you should not that nahi 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 prabhu ji i am right and you you are still wrong you're not asking for forgiveness nicely no no you should straight away forgive and he said a vaishnava is one who who even forgives beforehand if you know that vaishnava has realized he doesn't have to come to you and beg down no 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 a vaishnava yaar i am not even a vaishnava he thinks like that i am not even a vaishnava so who i am to forgive you that is a vaishnava that is a vaishnava is very high so we should not have in our mind we can only control our mind any negativity for others you just said never had any negativity for uh, duryodhan he was fighting he was killing never ram when he killed ravan after that he told vibhishan vibhishan you go and do the final rites of ravan vibhishan said my dear lord i will not do this he was such a fallen lusty person and ram said no he has left the body his soul is pure you must do the final rites so ram had full rights to say vibhishan you are right <laughs> he was a rascal you know his body should be eaten by jackals and something no he said no soul is pure eh? and you should respectfully uh, do all the final rites and vibhishan did that so we should just look at the external conditioning and we may have to do you know so called fighting robots are also fighting some court cases and all that that's external but internal we should not have any negativity otherwise when we die <laughs> this negativity will uh, we have to pay it back okay nam avatar prabhu thank you thank you mata hari krishna prabhu uh, prabhu just expanding on the similar the, the, this current example and taking that in this context uh, daksh did daksh prajapati did such a big offense like big sin of uh, offending a vaishnav mm. if you see the reactions or uh, the the karmic reactions of that how is it possible that he gets 
got body of Daksh Prajapati in the next life again because th that's he a very was, he was very punnivan at the same time Prabhu he was very punnivan now he was the leader of all the Prajapatis to become Prajapati is such a great position he was yes. the leader of all Prajapatis his punya see Krishna is very very equal in that sense huh Samoham Sarubhuteshu Name Deshu Saname Priya. He is very Sama. So if you do Punya, he will respond in a Punya way. If you do Papa, you do Papa way. Now Punya cannot contract Papa. Papa cannot contract Punya. So his offense is at one place. Punya is at one place. So he, he continued. He continued. He got the head of a goat. But Lord Shiva said, I don't take any offense. I don't take any offense. Why, why he did what he did? Because Sati. He loved Sati. Sati is a devotee. So hmm. he had to protect Lord Rama. So did the same thing. From that perspective, he, and he said, I have to give, in Bhagavad, I had to give him some punishment so, so that he can realize his mistake. But he said, I have not taken any offense. It's very clearly, Lord Shiva, he said, I don't take any offense. So Lord Shiva is a Param Vaishnava. So if, if, if a Vaishnava doesn't take any offense, yeah. then the other person doesn't get the, the karmic reaction. But Krishna takes the offense. On behalf of you, when Ambarish was offended, Ambarish did not take offense. Krishna took the offense. That's yeah. the problem. That's the problem. Now, devotee will not react. Even if you try to kill him, devotee will not react. But Krishna, uska jo baap hai na, father, <laughs> like if your son or daughter or you know your loved person get uh, some some physical injury or something, you will go after that person. Say, How yeah. dare you, you, you slap my son. <laughs> And slap, I'll slap your whole family or something like you'll have that emotion at least <laughs> you may not be able to express it because you love that person so our father becomes angry but it said we should not become angry okay Parikshit wasn't angry at uh, Shringi how oh, dare this little 14 year old boy giving me curse me you know who I am <laughs> You were like, no problem. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna. He had full power to contract. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, he had full power to contract. He could kill Takshak Prabhu. He could kill Takshak. He could pray to Krishna. Krishna personally came without prayers to protect him. Now, this time, if he, if he pray, will Krishna not come and help? He could go and attack Indra Prabhu. He could attack Indra. He had the power to attack Indra and kill Takshak. You give him shelter, Takshak, I'll even kill you. Uh -huh. Like, you know, a country, neighboring country gives shelter to all these terrorists. He said, what to speak of terrorists? I will even kill you. He had that much power. Yeah. So he took, thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Shringi Rishi. <laughs> he was just a boy. So, look, yeah. Yeah. Okay. so just, we just need to understand this in a way that because of his positive uh, karmas, yeah. he still managed to get a body of... Uh, Krishna yeah. will not um, like freeze them. He will say, yeah, you wanted it. And he wanted that. He isn't a devotee devotee. He's a Sakam Bhakta. Mm -hmm. So he, he continued. With his offenses also, he continued. <laughs> but he asked for forgiveness. He asked. Mm -hmm. He did not clarify his heart. But he asked for forgiveness. <laughs> There's some traces left. And he expressed it next birth by giving us to Narad Muni. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Prabhu, uh, like uh, looking at this example of Daksh Prajapati, when we say that, you know, next birth also, because we were thinking, I was thinking that we all have, uh, like at least I have so many anarthas and so many bad habits that uh, we might be thinking that we are having love for Krishna. We might be becoming, a, you know, towards Krishna, growing towards Krishna. But at the end of the day, if we have so many anarthas in ourselves, that uh, uh, gives us the chance of coming back and then starting all of our journey again. So, Not all over again, from the same point where you left. Yeah, from the same point. But uh, what's the point? We, in that way, we are not growing. So how do we make sure that first our anarthas are taken care of? We don't offend anybody. And at the same time, we're having love for Krishna. And then we're going forward for it as well. But, but it's like, Mataji, you're, you're achieving um, uh, target, you know, first target, second target, third target. So cleaning a heart is not an easy thing. But by engaging your senses, um, Gauranga Dashan Prabhu recently came and he was asked this question, how to control mind? And he said, very nice answer. He said, initially in a sadhak stage, it's easier for us to engage our senses rather to engage our mind. It's easier for us to engage the senses. Like Janvasmi Sevas, many, many devotees were involved. So many services they were doing. Um, but if you ask them, your mind should not think anything else, Prabhuji. 
very difficult no? so sadhaka is there so so slowly by engaging your senses there slowly and slowly your mind will also get controlled and one day you will reach there it will not happen like a, a digital zero or one today you are at one tomorrow you'll be at zero like no aparad no no aparad will get go minimize 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 by good association by reading shastra by serving krishna and trying to achieve guru's mercy you will get purified slowly and you like initially suppose you are doing 100 offenses then you will do 90 offenses then 80 and then slowly 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 all the offenses will go and that may take this birth or take take few more births uh, but that doesn't matter you 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 and all of us <laughs> me it been here for zillions and zillions and zillions of lifetime another one mara said another 10 20 lifetime is not too much actually if you look at from holistic perspective practically you have gone back to god it practically speaking um so yeah some fan fan example of propaganda when you switch off the fan fan is still running but it's just a matter of time fan will stop offenses will stop our mentality will get purified garanga prabhu said very nice statement very encouraging said anyone who has come to chaitanya mahaprabhu is sure to go back to godhead garanga prabhu is speaking i love this <laughs> your serving chaitanya mahaprabhu is so kind he will all of he said all of you will definitely go back to godhead but it's just a matter of time you want to go in this lifetime or you want like to suffer few more lifetimes it's up to you if you like to suffer most welcome <laughs> most he said hindi he said i'll say hindi he said jitna ladna hai lad lo upar ja ke ladne ko nahi milega no <laughs> obviously he's saying in a sarcastic way so do not fight basically he was saying do not fight but if you want to fight continue fighting because if you think in goloka he have no chance of fighting <laughs> so fight here but it's just you're wasting more time but he said goranga mahaprabhu is very very kind very merciful nitanand prabhu he will take all of us no matter where we are at the moment but if you want to suffer more go for it he will not impose you huh theek hai thank you thank you prabhu okay uh, last question is today we are getting lot of questions is very nice <laughs> priya mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna um, i just had a question in uh, not a question i just wanted to share that um, i heard by um, one time chitraleka devi dasi she was saying that someone was asking about chanting and she was saying that it is hard to actually um, obviously you know we, like you said we, we focus our um, senses on the seva but we will say like you know okay did you focus on krishna himself but it's hard to focus on that but we can use our senses for the service similarly like when we are chanting we cannot uh, our mind goes you know always is remembering something else besides the holy name <laughs> so she said i do um i when i'm you know chanting she does i'm not sure whether that's i mean we can do that i guess so in chin, chintan so she she, uh, she uh, remembers you know maybe what what sort of dresses that uh, the deities have worn to worn today you know what what um color it is and uh, what what bhoga what jewelry they are wearing so something like that we can remember about the yes. lord so while yes. we are chanting at least our mind is you know or oh, some some sort of past time that you know that has come so we can then still still be focused on krishna but you know obviously we are still trying to um, get to that level to uh, remember the mm-hmm. uh, the yeah, the holy name or just remember some sort of you know holy holy place or something like that yes and uh, that's very very important thank you mata ji for sharing goranga darshan prabhu also said um, to see we can look at the deities if that helps uh, you can look at the picture of the deities or we can remember that's why we hear more and more krishna katha so when we are chanting we can remember uh, krishna's past time rather than our past time <laughs> or someone else's past time <laughs> so yeah that's a nice way okay let's move forward another um, aspect process to advise a senior vaishnava or to correct a senior vaishnava huh? many times we are very enthusiastic in giving advices bhakti rasayan mara said the the most freely distributed thing in this world is free advice every time if anyone is in trouble we are definitely sure to give him advice are yaar who is asking you <laughs> who is asking you to give advice huh? and we think we are in a state to give advice especially in indian background people they give so many advices without even knowing or even bothering to know what's happening uh, now what's happening in this picture matri mata ji there were ants now, who is this in the picture first tell the picture chaitanya mahaprabhu okay and, and uh, i'm not and, able to do and who can help here please sadeva mata who is in this picture chaitanya mahaprabhu is definitely sure <laughs> 
that's logged in <laughs> next <laughs> question mohit prabhu can help he he knows lots of past times so no, i'm trying to remember i remember the past but i'm trying to remember the name okay that's why i asked that yeah, yeah. okay prasanna uh, ram hari krishna ha ah, ha someone said someone said i heard ra 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 ram chandra puri ram, ram chandra, chandra puri ram, ram chandra puri ki yes <laughs> okay jai ram please ram chandra puri please tell now avatar prabhu jaldi jaldi we are finishing we are approaching 9 o'clock ram chandra puri we should know that because i can just tell the past time and move on but when i, I know the you past time he is he is one of one of the sanyasis uh, okay one of the brahmins who is the guru maharaj of chaitanya mahaprabhu could tell that that's a simple one who is the guru maharaj of chaitanya mahaprabhu in this past time ishwar puri yes, sure. thank you who is the guru maharaj of ishwar puri anyway madhavendra puri madhavendra puri now madhavendra puri had say two prominent disciples at that time one was ishwar puri one was ramchandra puri ramchandra ishwar puri sincerely served his spiritual master now ramachandra puri did not serve his spiritual master nicely rather he criticized his spiritual master madhavendra puri when he was on death bed he was very weak his body could not move ishwar puri will even um, clean the stool and urine of madhavendra puri because his body externally was very weak ram and he was saying krishna krishna govinda govinda and he was sort of crying and out of humility saying you know i did not use my life properly madhavendra puri <laughs> imagine huh? but out of humility he was saying ramchandra puri came mm-hmm. and he is trying to correct his special master why are you trying to remember all this you know we should focus on brahman and madhavendra puri said bhag ja get out from my room because if i see you while leaving the body i'll definitely go to hell huh? so he literally chastised his own disciples later on same ramchandra puri because he was respected in the community of chaitanya mahaprabhu and his followers so they will very much respect him later on he trying to correct chaitanya mahaprabhu who is god and what was the the incident madhuri mata ji will say sorry i just gave the context there was um, sugar and the ground and uh, ants were there only ants were there yeah only ants, ants were coming out from the room of chaitanya out. mahaprabhu yeah and Not then uh, so he was about to um, stamp on the ants. no 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 he criticized chaitanya mahaprabhu no. you are eating too many sweets sweets you are sanyasi now ants can come from anywhere first thing huh? in india ants are everywhere not only sweet and they go anywhere any time so he is criticizing shri shri chaitanya mahaprabhu that you are a sanyasi you should not eat too many sweets why are you eating too many sweets because ants coming out of your room that that sort of proves that you have lot of sweets Oh my God! See, Chetan Mahaprabhu is very surprised, and out of humility, what was the reaction of Chetan Mahaprabhu? He did not say, "Are you you correcting me?" <laughs> what did he do, Mahasu Prabhu? He stopped eating. He stopped eating. He, he was only taking one dry chapati every day. Devotees were very upset at Ram Chandra Puri. Very, very upset. Very, very upset. Later on, he was just like Chetan Mahaprabhu himself did not do anything. Himself did not. The other Pandit, another Parshad. of chetanya also tried to correct mahaprabhu now just few examples here uh, if we are not in a position do not advise and definitely not correct definitely not correct ha huh? he is chetanya mahaprabhu in this case but in our case it can be a sanyasi it can be a senior brahmachari it can be a senior devotee just by looking at something because ants coming out is just an analogy you can say we can interpret many things in our mind <laughs> our mind is contaminated what can we understand what can we understand so we cannot um, reach to a, any conclusion like that i'll just continue for 5 minutes if that's okay um similar theme that's why i want to continue one is to advise one is to correct another level i'm going deeper here as per prabhupad taking a disciplinary action against that vaishnava and the example is sobhari muni and garuda when garuda was trying to take one fish and this long story everyone knows that first he warned garuda sobhari muni warned garuda and later he cursed garuda now garuda could have easily go left right center to sobhari muni what did he do he took the curse of sobhari muni he said no okay no problem now garuda is lord vishnu's personal associate his his career eternal career he cannot be cursed he says no curse applies on lord or or on his person so see but garuda took the curse 
is a is a word of a brahmana i will take it uh, so the third level the deeper level i'm talking taking a discipline that's why in management if you are in management planning to be in a management <laughs> or or you are currently um, going through that stage all of us including me very very dangerous because if you offer a vaishnava uh, if you offer a vaishnava what happens it says uh, the death rate in managers in scorn especially we can say is 100% if you are a manager, death rate. If you are a Vaishnava doing a Vaishnava, say Amog Lila Prabhu had a, had a class and he said, uh, management should be called a Vaishnava Seva, not a manager. I am a manager and you have to follow me. We can we can die very, very fast. Huh? As Prabhupada says, it's a two-edged sword. If the sword is on the other side, you can cut my if sword on this side, you will cut yourself. Many Prabhupada disciples went through this. They tried to correct Prabhupada. Many Prabhupada disciples who were very close to Prabhupada <laughs> tried to correct Prabhupada. And what happened? They left Prabhupada and his count. They ended up you know, in a very bad situation, externally speaking. So Prabhupada is saying we should be very, very careful of correcting others, advising others, and taking disciplinary action like banning someone <laughs> uh, because you see you're the manager. Uh, it can be very dangerous. It can be very dangerous. The steps have to be taken very, very carefully. Okay, I'll stop here. We're almost done. We just uh, have to conclude this and one more very important slide and then we'll continue in the next verse next time. Um, Sandra Gopal Prabhu, if he's here, any announcements? Yes, Prabhu, I'm here. Krishna. Um, so not really more. Any announcements as such? It's just the assignment you mentioned is due at the end of next month. So that's okay. Thirtieth month. of September is the last date. Uh, earlier submissions are most welcome. <laughs> Don't have to submit on thirtieth itself. Uh, and one thing I remember: next week is Radha Ashtami uh, on Wednesday, so we'll have class next week or next next oh, week. I think it's the week after. Okay, week sorry, after. Prabhu, sorry, sorry, my mistake. <laughs> no, it's a week after. So next week we have Wednesday class, the week after we have Thursday class. Okay. We won't Thank have you. the class on the 11th, we'll have the yes. class on the 12th. Okay. Okay, thank you. My my mistake. Um, okay, thank you, everyone. If you have any questions on this topic, it's a very, very nice topic. Uh, it's a compassionate versa. Very beautiful. So please write it and we can discuss uh, in the beginning of next class. Hare Krishna.